What's up, guys? Episode 41 of The Murder Mentality. And um, as you can see, I have left my handy-dandy tripod <laughs> for the past few days, so I'll have to make sure I bring that in tomorrow. Um, so I just finished tattooing uh, my cousin's wife uh, and uh, putting my little niece's name on her arm. And, uh, you know, I tattooed her like 13 years ago, uh, wild, a long time. And, um, you know, we, we all talked a lot, you know, here and Lacey was here. Uh, we all talked about losing people a lot and we talked about like a lot of the formative experiences that we've had in life. And one of the things I want to, to really talk about today is like letting go of the pain <sighs> guys we have pain that we carry with us that we don't even think about sometimes we like we walk around with these wounds and don't take the time to address the fact that we're like carrying them like a burden and like, I've been thinking about that a lot because it's not something I have thought about a lot, but like I have carried around the hurt from Cassie passing on, the hurt from my cousin, for example, you know, even though that was 10 years ago passing on and a thousand other, you know, a death of a thousand small cuts. And I've been carrying that stuff around for fucking decades of my life, man, my childhood, everything. And I'm just here to make an offering and a suggestion as much as I can. What's up, Jessica? What's up, Lori? Um, to just let it go. Like, I want you to understand that you're not the things that happened to you. You're not the people that you've lost. You're not the pain that you experience when you think about those things. You're not you. <laughs> You are experiencing those things. You were experiencing all this. Thing. There's a thing behind all of it that's so much more important. And I'm here to tell you that as long as you hold on to all that pain, as long as you hold on to all those little things, that, that eye of the needle, that narrow road, that, that straight and narrow path or whatever you want to call it, the, the road, the trail to your future and those things that are most important to you is cut off. You can't carry all this pain with you into the future. You have to let it go. You know, I've had to learn to let so much go. I've had to learn to let the wounds that other people have done me go. And, and to, more importantly, not take them personally. I've had to learn to let the things that happened to me as a child go. Let the, let the people who I've lost and the people who have exited my life, be it from death or other ways, just go, you know, and truly understand that this too shall pass. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. You know, when I, as I finished tattooing my cousin's wife, Sarah and Lacey pierced their little, their little daughter, Willow's ears, you know, and we, um, we hugged and embraced one last time and uh, sent them on their way tonight. And I won't see them again tomorrow before they get on their plane and head back to Washington. And it's been 10 years since I've seen my cousin. And I grew up with him. I mean, we, I, we like took baths together and shit like that when we were toddlers. Like, And we had a chance to talk about our childhoods and like we had a chance to talk about all the pain that we experienced and all the things that made us grow up so much faster than we ever should have had to. And, you know, in some cases like my own, you know, and my other cousin who didn't make it, um, tried to grow up as best we could, you know, tried to learn to cope with the things that happened with us as best we could. But because we carried those pains, we carried those wounds around with us. We never escaped them. You can't run from the pain that you carry with you. But as we talked about all this stuff and as, as we embraced one more last time and I hugged him and I realized how badly I'd missed my cousin for the last 10 years, you know, how, how, for lack of a better term, like lonely, it's been since I've moved to Kentucky. I didn't, I'm not saying I don't have people out here I love, 
I'm not saying that there's not people I've, I've made it intense, amazing connections, but probably more intense and more like plentiful connections with other humans than I've made anywhere else I've ever lived. But, you know, there's something here that I think that maybe a very select few people can really vibe with and understand, and that's that I left my whole family behind. My kids are here, and that's it. I don't have any of the other blood family I grew up with. I don't have any of the people that I, I grew up knowing as family here anymore. All my little sisters, my cousins, my aunts, my mother, you know, my grandmother, none of them are here. And it doesn't occur to me how much I carry that pain of not having them around until they're here for a short period of time and I have to say goodbye to them again, you know? And I'm not even sure I'd say I carry the pain because it's not something I carry around with me in such a way that I'm like, oh, I miss them so much. Oh, I miss them so much. But it's just like I've realized how compartmentalized I've been able to become in regards to those types of emotions. I realize how able I've become because of the pain I've experienced in my life to, to set it down on the counter and wait for a time that it's appropriate to experience it and then experience it then and then set it back down on the counter until it's ready again or until it's something that's relevant. But what I did today is, you know, I we made a promise to each other that we weren't going to let this kind of time go by ever again. You know, when there was some when when my other cousin Joe died, when he when he took his life, when he, you know, as hard as that was, man, it, it was so hard for me to talk to those members of the family that were close around him and stuff like that. And it was like I was already in the madness as deep as you could get. And it went years without us talking. And I remember the first time I saw a picture of his daughter on Facebook. And I remember crying. And I remember thinking to myself, like, holy God in heaven, the whole world's been going by and living along. And all this time that I haven't been checking on people, they've all been growing and doing their own thing and living their own complex and difficult and meaningful lives, too. But I remember seeing that face and being like, uh, something has to change. And I remember when he reached out to me and said he wanted to visit the first time, you know, and, the, you know, that didn't happen. And, you know, we, we, we kept going back and forth. And it's hard because he lives in fucking Polesboro, Washington. That's across the country, literally. Like all the way on the other side, like the other coast. And I just was able to realize that, like, there is to a degree a level of pain that I carry around not having my people here. And it's like I've made my people here. Don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is like not having my people, not maintaining those connections. And one of my coaches always says is like, oh, if you feel off today, what the fuck have you done to feel on? And it made me realize, man, if I miss them and I miss that connection and I miss the ability to have a family connection with people that maybe I didn't even ever have, really. Like we, my family is not a communicative family. And if I miss that feeling and I see that feeling in other people and I understand how powerful it is for them, then it is on me to drop that pain and quit carrying it like it's a burden and start carrying something else that will help keep that pain from occurring. And that's responsibility. I'm here to fucking tell you guys that responsibility is the cure to all of the fucking pains you have in your life. Responsibility in some way, shape, or form. That's taking responsibility for the situation that's causing you pain, taking responsibility for the outcome and taking responsibility for the steps that are needed to help remedy something that might be causing you pain. But as long as we keep carrying that pain around with us, sometimes not even realize we're doing it, we're not carrying the responsibility at the same fucking time. And I'm not saying that you can't be responsible for something and still feel the pain but I'm saying that it will lessen it, that will help you learn to grow around that pain, around that difficulty, around that grief, whatever it might be. And I know that me and Lacey and my children earlier on when they were here, you know, at the shop and when they were here with breakfast and her children and, and, and my cousin's child, and when we were all sitting around at that table together, I really felt some type of way and I realized how badly I've always wanted to just have a family 
and I realized that I do have one, and I have an amazing family of people that have included themselves in my life, and, and people that have, I've included in my life, and, and this family that Lacey and I have, and, and having somebody from my family come across the country and, and visit me, and have it be somebody whom I hadn't seen in 10 years, was fucking powerful. And I just want you guys to understand that we carry around pain that we don't even fucking realize we're carrying all the time. But it's our ability to recognize that there's a solution to that that'll change it for us. And so I want you to know, guys, today that, like, you're not fucking alone, like I said yesterday, man. And I, this hits really fucking hard because it's like, you know... We sat and talked about what it would have been like if Joe was still around. We sat and talked about what it would have been like if he hadn't taken his life and, you know, what we're, where we would all be. And although that didn't have the formative experience on me the same way it did for my cousin and his wife, um, because they were both so close to him, um, I had a similarly formative experience through Cassie. And for us to all sit down there and talk and be able to talk and understand that no matter how difficult, no matter how painful, no matter how crazy all those things. And Lacey, with her own formative experiences through losing Chris, the father of her children, and to talk about how this experience of losing somebody that, you know, different people in each case and sometimes related, but like how powerful that and painful and crazy that experience was that it has absolutely formed us into people who value things so deeply because we've lost so much. And somebody told me when Cassie died, it was when it was really fresh, man. And, and there's been a lot of feelings I've been struggling with lately about that anyway. But like they said, you just like cherish this sharpness of that pain because it's not always going to feel that way. And then there's going to be a day when you think back and you're going to think and you're going to miss that it hurts so bad because it means that that memory of that person was that much more fresh, that that memory of that person was that much more crystal clear. And I was like, fuck, man, what? But I get it now. You know, I, I fucking get it. Because when Joe died, man, I was, it fucked me up. Even though he was in a different state and I hadn't talked to him really, really super regularly for many years, you know, but like, it did fuck me up. And <laughs> it, it was a different experience today, man. Like I could remember, like I looked at his face, I'd, I realized I'd almost forgotten it. I hadn't, but I recognized him as I was tattooing it on my other cousin, but I was like, oh man, like this is, this had, that become a little bit fuzzy. The pain that I experienced and that all of us experienced when he died had become fuzzy over the years. And I mean, that's good. That's good because if we lived with it with the sharpness that it, when it first happened, we'd never fucking survive. But it was beautiful to realize that none of us have decided to carry those things around like a cross anymore. None of us carried it around as our excuse for being fucked up or having problems or not being able to trust or not being able to do anything. And to realize that all three of those people in that room looked at me and at some point in time, like be it this week, today, yesterday, or, you know, last month or multiple times, I've said, man, I respect you so much for surviving what you've survived and having it change you in such a positive way. And to have the people that I respect so much because of the exact same types of things happening has changed the conversation I have with myself about my own pain. And like Taylor said here, it makes you grow whether or not it's for better or worse. It's really our choice. But for us to grow, grow from it, we really do have to put it down. It means that we have to put down the idea that it's our cross or our burden to bear and start letting God into our hearts. Start letting a spiritual awakening take place in such a way that we're able to realize that we are not those emotions that we're experiencing and that it's okay. It's okay to hurt, but it's not okay to live there. You know, knowing that Joe took his own life, you know, knowing that Cassie overdosed, knowing that the people I know that have died recently most of them have been through addiction or hurting themselves. And knowing how lonely all those people felt 
that's so important for me to let you guys know that it's you're not alone and you should never carry your pain alone. I've been struggling the past couple of weeks. My best friend was found dead from an overdose. It was the first time in my life that I didn't shove the pain down and hold on to it. Instead, I embraced the pain and cried till I couldn't anymore. I was able to smile the next day and not carry it with me as a result. Well, Lori, I have a couple suggestions and thank you so much for being so vulnerable on that. You should look up a song if you can on YouTube or Spotify called Waves of Sorrow by Jocko Willink and uh, Akira the Dawn. Um, it's probably the most succinct and beautiful way I've ever heard somebody talk about the grieving process. And I think you should absolutely listen to it. Prepare to cry though. You will cry. I promise you, but it's good. And then, you know, very much some of the stuff that I learned from listening to that man talk about that stuff is like, it'll pick you up sometimes when you're not expecting it and carry you right the fuck away. And, it's important that you experience that. When Cassie died, I'd excuse myself from tattooing and I'd go cry in the back room for a half hour and come back and finish the tattoo, but I had to blow that steam off. It's like a fucking pressure cooker. So don't do it alone. And if you do want to talk to me, please do. Like, I'm here. My door is open, man. More people than most people that, like, watch these lives recognize talk to me. And I try to give each one of them a little bit of my time or as much as I'm able to. I love all of you guys. Like, I really want you to understand that, like, all of you guys are beautiful, perfect creations in God's eyes for what, what he's made you to be. And you were made on purpose for a purpose. And that purpose is to help other people. And you can't help other people with things that you haven't experienced. So your pain is literally, is literally the prerequisite to your ability to help others. <laughs> I love you guys. Please don't go to bed tonight without telling somebody that you care about that maybe you don't talk to often enough that you love them. Okay? It's my only invite today. Just tell somebody that you love them that doesn't hear it often enough from you. Because I love all of you guys. I need you to know that. Talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>